Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mills. Um, normally I would not do a video looking this bad, but you guys know I like to be like honest with you. My face is insane. I'm blaming the baby. That's fun. But I wanted to introduce this video. I had my friend who just got back, but she was staying in Puerto Plata for a month and a half, two months. Um, she recorded a little Airbnb tour for us, as well as a little bit of cost of living in Puerto Plata specifically. I know that I've done my videos for Santiago and Jarabocoa and the kind of the DR in general, but I think it's helpful for those of you who are interested in Puerto Plata and who wanna be on the beach or in the North Coast for you to see what you can get with a set amount per month and then what you could get longer term. Of course, if you're into a nicer living situation, you'll be paying a little bit more. And to be right on the beach and have nicer amenities, you, of course, <laughs> will be paying more as well. Um, and then she shows us a little bit of the barrio that she goes to stay in after her time at the apartment is up. So just a little bit of an interesting video, I think, um, especially during Toque de Queda. She talks about that in Puerto Plata. So you guys can see kind of the latest in DR. And I'm sorry, I was gonna do like a an interview format with her, but I figured I just wanted to like get the information to you. Um, I have another video coming up this week about my must-haves for second trimester pregnancy and um, a couple other DR videos as well. So make sure you stay tuned, hit subscribe if you're not subbed yet, and let me know what you think about the apartment they stayed in, if you would pay that, and what you think about her cost of living analysis. And if you're in Puerto Plata, you can definitely give us insight into if these are accurate for you as well. You walk into the apartment and you have kind of a great room. So we have two couches, a dining room table, and our kitchen. There's our front door, our bottle of water, view of the street, we have a little balcony that connects to the other apartments. We're lucky because the windows are really big and they're glass, you can open them all the way up and normally there's a nice breeze. Today it's very hot and no breeze, so they're closed. You walk down the hallway and there's a bathroom, good sized bathroom. Sink, toilet, mirror. It's our hanging organizer and our shower. Small but perfect. And then here's our bedroom. So we have a big headboard, which is kind of nice. Kind of frames the bed, so to speak. That's our air conditioning unit, our closet, which is nice and large, and our extra towels up top. My towel is drying. And then we have our dresser, our television, and then we just keep our suitcases there, mostly because we don't know where else to keep them. So for our apartment, we paid about $1,100 for a month and a week. The girl that rented it, it was originally supposed to be $1,100 for a month, but I guess she kind of made an error with looking at our dates. So we got a month and a week. It's significantly more expensive if you do it for a week or a couple days. I think the price ends up being like 50 or 60 bucks a night, um, as opposed to like ours was like, like almost 40 a night. However, in hindsight, that was pretty high for the area. Um, we stay in Costamba, which is like a kind of like a resort part of Puerto Plata. It's right by the beach. It's guarded. Um, it's like pretty walking friendly. So we stayed there. However, this summer we had originally started an apartment in Via Confresi. So that was like kind of up in the mountain a little bit. We had an issue there. We had to leave. We decided to leave and we kind of wanted to get out quick. And so we kind of rushed into this apartment. Um, which had some perks and it was like we were kind of the only people there for most of the time some weekends they had a couple people come but otherwise we had kind of full reign of the building um, and the pool the only thing I would say is that we definitely could have had a better quality for 40 bucks a night um, if we had gone with Airbnb similarly Airbnb does kind of give you some protection so the building while it's marketed for like vacationers and like short-term rentals isn't truly prepared for that um, they don't have an inversor, which is kind of gives you power when the power goes out. And we lost power a couple times, even though we're supposed to be in a 24 hour, seven days a week power grid. But it's the DR, so that doesn't really happen. Like it doesn't stay on. 
so when it goes off, like you're stuck with that power, which is no big deal if it's for like a little bit, but like when you're at like eight, 10 hours, you're like, all right, am I gonna lose everything in my fridge? Um, in terms of water, we had like multiple issues and multiple days where we didn't have water, which again is pretty common here, but like to pay that price, you expect to have water full time. So most people have tinnacles, which I don't see one close by, but it's like a big tank that you put on your roof. Um, I guess they have one, but when there's a lot of people, it would run out. And at one point it was like leaking. So I would say if I could do it again, I would probably find somewhere on Airbnb that I could do for like 900 for a month and a half or so, which I feel like is realistic. So in terms of cost of living, it's definitely pretty affordable. I would say it would be reasonable to expect us to get an apartment for like under $200 a month here if we were doing like a year-round rental. I don't think $200 a month would get us air conditioning though. It's also like outside of the city. Um, Roberto's family lives in La Loma de la Bestias, which is very much like near Confresi and like the northern part of Puerto Plata and like very much outside of what you would consider like center city. So out around here, you could definitely get rent for about $200 a month. That being said, it's like a pretty cheap cost of living. You can eat very affordably here. Like if you want to eat pretty typical Dominican food of like plantains, rice, beans, maybe some meat here or there, salami. Like you could probably get by on like 30 bucks a week. I think the biggest thing around here though is that prices are flexible for whether or not you are a tourist. So... We went on the Teriferco, which is like the cable car up the mountain, um, which we would have recorded a video if we could to show everyone, but unfortunately it's been like closed because of COVID. Um, and like they straight up have us on paper different price for tourists. I think it was double. So like my fiance was, I think he was like 2,000 pesos, which is 200 pesos, which is like, I don't know, like four-ish bucks. And I was like 600 pesos, something like that. Like I was on, I was $10 and he was like 2 or $3. Like it was literally double, if not more. Um, and similarly, like a lot of stuff around here, like apartments or things that are like, they're not set in stone pricing. The second that you're like, um, like a foreigner, it's clear that things are more expensive. Perfect example, we went and went to get his teeth checked for like a dentist appointment and he needed a root canal. Well, he needed like his uh, wisdom teeth out. And the guy literally quoted us like double the price and his sister was like, you can't pay that. They saw that you're a foreigner and that's why his price is so high. So pricing is definitely fluctuates based off your status if you're a local or if you are a um, like foreigner because they assume that you have more money, which is tough. So we are currently staying at Roberto's mom's house, which is in La Entrada de la Loma de la Bestia. And it is our second night here, and I just wanted to comment on Toque de Queda. When we were in, like, a private community and, like, kind of more close to the city, like, people literally didn't move. However, kind of like Toque de Queda doesn't exist here. So we are in, like, a the street that enters, like, a Loma, which is kind of like a neighborhood up in the mountains. And so generally, like, Lomas are much more, like, isolated. So it could be because of that. But it's 7.30 or 7.45. Toca de Queda started like 30 to 45 minutes ago and it's kind of like nothing changed. The Colmados are shut. Like everything's closed, but I don't know, the one next to us, like I'll see if I can show you. It's still open. Can't get a good view. But also the other Colmado, stayed open until like 7 20 so as much as it was like closed it wasn't closed on time it's very interesting to see how toque de queda is kind of followed there's a lot of people walking around it's like no nothing at all to walk to like a neighbor's house and there's also just like straight up a lot of cars and motorcycles and pasolas so it's interesting toque de queda and el barrio very different